चैप्टर फोर ग्रोइंग अप एज बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स बींग अ बॉय और अ गर्ल इज एन इम्पॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ वंस आइडेंटिटी द सोसाइटी वी ग्रो अप इन टीचेज अस वाट काइंड ऑफ बिहेवियर इज एक्सेप्टेबल फॉर गर्ल्स एंड बॉयज वाट बॉयज एंड गर्ल्स कैन और कैन नॉट डू We often grow up thinking that these things are exactly the same everywhere. But do all societies look at boys and girls in the same way? We will try and answer these questions in this chapter. We will also look at how the different roles assigned to boys and girls prepare them for their future roles as men and women. We will learn that most societies value men and women differently. The roles women play and the work they do are usually valued less than the roles men play and the work they do. This chapter will also examine how inequalities between men and women emerge in the area of work. Growing up in Samoa in the 1920s, the Samoan island are part of a large group of small island in the southern part of the Pacific Ocean. In the 1920s, according to research reports on Samoan society, Children did not go to school. They learned many things such as how to take care of children or to households, work from older children and from adults. Fishing was a very important activity on the island. Young people therefore learned to undertake long fishing expeditions, but they learned these things at different points in their childhood. As soon as babies could walk, their mothers or other adults no longer looked after them. Older children often as young as 5 years old took over this responsibility both boys and girls looked after their younger siblings but by the time a boy was about 9 years old he joined the older boys in learning outdoor jobs like fishing and planting coconuts girls had to continue looking after small children or do errands for adults till they were teenagers but once they became teenagers they had much more freedom After the age of 14 or so girls also went on fishing trips worked in the plantation learned how to weave baskets cooking was done in special cooking houses where boys were supposed to do most of the work while girls helped with the preparation growing up male in madhya pradesh in the 1960s the following is adapted from an account of experiences of being in a small town in madhya pradesh in 1960s From class 6 onward boys and girls went to separate schools the girls school was designed very differently from the boys school they had a central courtyard where they played in total seclusion and safety from the outside world the boys school had no such courtyard and our playground was just a big space attached to the school every evening once school was over the boys watched as hundreds of School girls crowded the narrow street as these girls walked on the street. They looked so purposeful. This was unlike the boys who used the street as a place to stand around idly, to play, to try out tricks with their bicycles. For the girls, the street was simply a place to get straight home. The girls always went in groups, perhaps because they also carried fear of being teased or attacked. After reading the two examples ever we realize that there are many different ways of growing up often we think that there is only one way in which children grow up this is because we are most familiar with our own experiences if we talk to elders in our family we will see that their childhoods were probably very different from ours we also realize that societies make clear distinctions between boys and girls This begins from a very young age we are for example given different toys to play with boys are usually given cars to play with the girls dolls both toys can be a lot of fun to play with why are girls then given dolls and boys cars toys become a way of telling children that they will have different futures when they become men and women if we think about it the difference is created in the smallest and the most everyday things how girls must dress what games boys should play how girls need to talk softly or boys need to be tough all these are ways of telling children that they have specific roles to play when they grow up to be men and women later in life this affects the of subject we can study or the careers we can choose in most societies including our own The roles men and women play or the work they do are not valued equally. Men and women do not have the same status.
let us look how this difference exists in the work done by men and women valuing housework hermit's family did not think that the work jaspreet did within the house was real work this feeling is not unique to their families across the world the main responsibility for housework and care giving tasks like looking after the family especially children the elderly and sick members lies with women yet as we have seen the work that women do within the home is not recognized as work it is also assumed that this is something that comes naturally to women it therefore does not have to be paid for and society devalues this work lives of domestic workers in the story eva harmit's mother was not the only one who did the housework a lot of the work was done by mangala their domestic helper many homes particularly in towns and cities employ domestic workers they do a lot of work sweeping and cleaning washing clothes and dishes cooking looking after young children or the elderly most domestic workers are women sometimes even young boys or girls are employed to do this work wages are low as domestic work does not have much value a domestic worker's pay can begin as early as 5 in the morning and end as late as 12 at night despite the hard work they do their employers often do not show them much respect this is what melani a domestic worker had to say about her experience of working in delhi my first job was with a rich family that lived in a three storied house the mem sahib was very strange as she would show to get any work done my work was in the kitchen there were two other girls who did the cleaning one day would begin at 5 o'clock for breakfast we would get a, a cup of tea and two dry rotis we could never get a third roti in the evening when i cooked the food the two other girls would beg me to give them an extra roti i would secretly give it to them and make an extra one for myself we were so hungry after working through the day we could not wear chappals in the house in the winter our feet would swell up with the cold i used to feel scared of the mem sahib but also felt angry and humiliated did we not work all day did we not deserve to be treated with some respect in fact what we commonly term as housework actually involves many different tasks a number of these tasks requires heavy physical work in both rural and urban areas women and girls have to fetch water in rural areas women and girls carry heavy head load of firewood tasks like washing clothes cleaning sweeping and picking up roads require bending lifting and carrying many chores like cooking in walls standing for long hours in front of hot stoves the work women do is strenuous and physical demanding words that we normally associate with men another aspect of housework and care giving that we do not recognize is that it is very time consuming in fact if we add up the housework and the work women do outside the home we find that women spend much more time working than men and have much less time for leisure women's work and equality as we have seen the low value attached to women's household and care giving work is not an individual or family matter it is part of a larger system of inequality between men and women it therefore has to be dealt with through actions not just at the level of the individual or the family but also by the government as we now know equality is an important principle of our constitution the constitution says that being male or female should not become a reason for discrimination in reality inequality between the sexes exists the government is therefore committed to understanding the reasons for this and taking positive steps to remedy the situation For example it recognizes that burden of child care and housework fall on women and girls this naturally has an impact on whether girls can attend school it determines whether women can work outside the house and what kind of jobs and careers they can have the government has set up anganwadis or child care centers in several villages in the country the government has passed laws that make it mandatory for organizations that have more than 30 women employees to provide crèches facilities the provision of crèches helps many women to take up employment outside the home it also makes it possible for more girls to attend school